I've done a video like this in the past, talking all about my love for retro games and why they're important, but I think every once in a while, as a channel and as a community that embraces nostalgia and retro video games and holds it up with such high regard, that it's important to dive back into our past and look at why. Why in the world are retro games so important? Why do these games invoke so many emotions? Why can I look at gameplay of a certain video game and start to get choked up? Well, today I want to talk about that. I was born in 1985 in Costa Mesa, California. What a great time to be born. For me, I look at it as, wow, that is when the Nintendo came to America. There is a reason that I love video games so much. It was, it was meant to be, it was written in the stars. I am one with Nintendo. Now, obviously that's not true and there's a million other things that play a part in why I love video games and Nintendo especially so much, but that's just one of the funny little quirks that I love. Obviously, being born in 85, I was really more of a 90s kid. By the time I was five years old, the 90s were in full swing. I was enjoying all the greatness that the 90s were bringing us, and what a time to be alive. Video games were a big part of my household when I was growing up. Now, it's interesting because my mom and dad had zero interest for video games at all. They never really cared. My dad never talked anything bad about them. He just never really spoke about them in any way, shape, or form. And my mom, on the other hand, would buy us the games and help us pick games that we loved and yes she was being a good mother by avoiding games like altered beast and telling me that i shouldn't be playing games like mortal kombat and at the time you look at it and go come on mom really but now as a parent myself i firmly lay down the law sometimes with my kid and go you're eight years old you're not playing grand theft auto well they haven't even asked but i wouldn't let them Video games were fun as a child because, well, I had two brothers that loved video games just as much as me. Multiplayer was a huge thing in our household. Most of the games that I grew up really loving even on the NES were games like Double Dragon and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and River City Ransom and Super Dodgeball because these were games that were multiplayer. It made it so much more fun to play video games and I know it's a big conversation that everybody has, but yes, playing on the couch next to someone is a completely different experience experience than what it is now playing on a headset. It is still great. It is still fun. I still do it, but it's totally different sitting down with someone who can play video games right there next Heart to you. Four player battle royal mode with double teaming and more weapons than ever before. It was always fun for us. It's what we did at every family event. When people would come over for Thanksgiving, all the cousins would get together and we would play video games together. It was our fun time. It was our escape from real life. And gosh, it was just a glorious way to enjoy each other's company. Company. Let me make something super clear as well. As much as video games were used as a lighthearted form of entertainment, a way to have fun, a way to goof around, a way to be silly, there was also a period of my life, I'd say about five or six years, where video games were used as kind of an escape from reality. Uh, we grew up very poor, and I'm talking very poor. Uh, we spent many hours waiting in lines to get bread from different churches. I remember going with my mom all the time for that. I also remember always being at grocery stores and paying with food for food stamps. And that's just part of a lot of different things that I was kind of escaping from as a kid, things that made me feel insecure. Another thing growing up was my dad was an alcoholic. He was drinking all the time. He was doing things he shouldn't have been doing. He had drug problems. It was a time where video games were used to escape from a lot of those things. Yes, there was other things I did as well, you know, go outside and play, do whatever, of course, as any kid would do. But there was a big part of that where I used video games as a way to just kind of be away from all that and not have to deal with any of that. A lot of things kind of going on where I wanted to escape. Now, before I go on, I do want to say my dad has been clean, doesn't drink. It's been about 20 years since he's done any of that. My parents are not some of the, the greatest people I've ever met in my life. My dad is the most loving human being I've ever met. Uh, all my friends can vouch for that. My dad will not go a day without texting me, son, I love you. And I just need to let you know that. That is my dad. He's been doing that for about 20 years now. My mom's the same. Um, I couldn't ask for better parents. Video games were more to us than simply just let me play a game. It's always meant more to me. And it's so hard to explain that to people in a quick conversation when they look at me as a 34 year old man and go, why do you like video games so much? This 
is so stupid. This is so silly. My kids play a video game. It's so dorky. And I can't explain to them in that short amount of time everything I just told you guys and go, no, this is so much more to me. Even when I try to tell them about nostalgia, I'm like, oh, don't you remember playing with Tamagotchi or Skip It or something that was important to you? And they're like, yeah, but I don't really care about it. That to me shows me that for them, it didn't have these, these deeper attachments to it. Yes, I'm sure it was fun for them, but I think it's these deep things, these deep-rooted things in my life that really set video games on a pedestal above the rest. Something that I learned recently as an adult when I was going through some hard times in my life, some other hard situations in my life, I was talking to a doctor and he was saying there's something in our brains and he was referring to it as a pleasure center. And he was basically saying that when you're a kid, typically between the ages of like five and eight, that when there's things that go on in your life and there's things that you enjoy, your brain can kind of lock those things in. It'll lock it in place in your brain forever as a heightened sense of pleasure. So a lot of times when we look back at things, I would think to myself like, okay, like when I was older and I was 32 years old a couple years ago and I went to the Toys R Us that I went to as a kid, my childhood Toys R Us. I went back and I loved it and I was happy to be there, but I was thinking, this isn't as big as I remember. This isn't as wild as I remember. Not even because the video games aren't all there, the same ones I grew up with, but just everything, the ceilings aren't as high. And it's one of those things when I look back, I'm like, okay, that's part of that pleasure center he was talking about. When I was a kid, I enjoyed it so much. It was huge, it was magical, it was wondrous. And yes, Toys R Us was, believe me. But it's something where I was like, okay, my brain has put this in, my brain has locked this in as, as a pleasure point in my life. And I think back to video games, and obviously they're amazing, but I think what he was saying is there's a scientific also reason to this of why video games have been locked in as a pleasure point for you, as something that when you think of, it's amazing, it's fantastic. It's also part of the reason he was saying when a lot of kids go through stuff and have trauma as kids, why it can kind of mess up their life because there's certain things that were heightened and even looked at as a pleasure thing. Things that shouldn't be pleasurable kind of got locked in as a thing of pleasure and can kind of screw up parts of their life when they get older because they might've experienced things that either they wanted to experience or didn't want to experience or experienced out of their own will or in their own will. And it's just kind of been locked in in their life as something as a part of their life that they might need to, to revisit another time when they're older. I know I'm kind of running in a lot of different places here, but I just wanted to express to you guys different reasons why I think video games and nostalgia are locked into my brain as something that's not only amazing but just something that's prevalent even if I try to avoid it. It's a prevalent part of my life and it's just always kind of there. Something I find super interesting is when you talk to a lot of different people who love retro video games, you know, we get a lot of the same answers. Oh, I love Mario. I love Donkey Kong. I love Kirby. I love Sonic. We all have those. We all, we all love those games. Let's agree on that. But when you talk to people and dive a little deeper, they're like, hey, you know what? I have a weird attachment to this game or a weird nostalgia for this game, or I'm really into this game, or I really love that game. For me, let's say it's a game like Super Spike V-Ball. And I feel like nowadays that doesn't really happen as much. And let me explain what I mean by that. What I mean is when we were younger as kids, what you got is what you got. That's kind of just the way it was. When you would go to a video store and rent a game, my parents go, hey, let's go rent a game. We'll pack up, we'll take you to video $1 and let's go. I'd go pick a random game. Okay, I've played that, I've played that, I've played, oh, never played that. I like the box art, let me get it. I would go home, I would play it. Eh, you know what, mom and dad, it's not that good. Let me, let me, can I go back? No. That was, that's it. No, there was no, hey, let's go back and return it. Let's go back and uh, let you swap it out for another one. No, that's not how it worked in my household. And I feel like that was the same for a lot of people. The problem is nowadays, it's kind of like Netflix syndrome. You know, video games are a lot like you turn it on, you can scroll through a million games. I got Game Pass. If I don't like a game, eh, close out, next game, let's try it out. It wasn't like that back then. We didn't have the option to simply scroll through game after game after game after list after list after list. And I think it kind of gives retro gamers a cool little advantage that we had. And yeah, some people might want to call it a disadvantage, but I think that we really got forced to play some of those games that others would probably nowadays just simply skip and go, this isn't that good. But, but how far do we get into it? Do we know it's not that good because we didn't like the first level or two? You know, there's many games back in the day where you would play it and go, it's not that great. 
And then you play it and you play it and you play it and you play it because that's all you got. And maybe it still isn't that great, but it's weird because you can still build a crazy sense of nostalgia for a certain game because you put so much time into it. Hence, it has a special place in your heart now as an older person. I know I kind of went all over the place explaining to everyone why I love retro video games. I just have so much to say about it. Yes, there's the scientific pleasure center as locking it in as something we love and also just a part of our life, whether we like it or not. And even the escape that I had as a kid with the attachment of needing to get away from the real hard things in life. Yes, the enjoyment of playing with my brothers, the simple fun of it all. But in the end, retro games are fantastic. All that aside, we grew up with some amazing characters. We got to see these characters being birthed, being born. We got to experience when video games would try new things with these characters, figure out what is Mario? What is his timeline? What is he doing? What is Link doing? How does he work? Does he talk? Does he do this? Does he do that? We got amazing graphics. We got to experience some of the best sprite work ever in history to this day. Some of the most amazing soundtracks ever, ever to date some of the best visuals ever that you can imagine, some of the best stories ever told. No paid DLC, we were given video games that were complete video games that were here is what you're paying for and here is what you get. You want all the extra fun little add-ons, you gotta earn them, you gotta work for them. Oh man, there is just so many reasons that retro games are important to me. I just wanted to let you all know, and for me, I need to know. Why, why do you guys love retro video games? I wanna hear it besides the fact of the simple way that I just ended it, because they're great, because they're good. Do you have deeper meaning? Do you have deeper meaning of why these are so ingrained in your brain as something that's actually important to you? That actually you'll defend when people mock or make fun of? Those are the stories I wanna hear. Let me know in the comments below. Have a good one.